The station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Good Tuesday afternoon, everyone. It is about as gray and misty as it can get out there today. The question is, does this cloud cover, does some of this light rainfall let up at all the rest of the afternoon? We'll have your forecast in just a bit. And today on the News at Noon, new video released into the person throwing a Molotov cocktail at the Cuban embassy. What the new video is showing. And latest screenwriters deal could ring in new content on your favorite streaming services. We're stretching your dollar with options, bringing you the most bang for your buck. And good afternoon and thank you for joining us for the News at Noon. I'm Mark Hall. Let's take a live look outside in the district on this rather rainy Tuesday. That is the Washington Monument. Of course, it is raining out. It is foggy out. It is cloudy out. Meteorologist Damon Madsen joins us now. Latest check in the forecast. Damon, do you have anything else to add? <laughs> All the words to describe it. <laughs> you got it, my friend. Yeah, it is just gray out there. Hardly able to see the Washington Monument in the distance because of that light rain and mist, even some fog that just hangs around here today, folks. It's not the nicest day outside, and it's just as gray in places like Hagerstown. Let's check out the live camera. Not as much of that light rain or mist. You're finding that more to the east so toward DC. I-95 is where that light drizzle continues to fall, but nonetheless, a very gray, cloudy sky even out across some of our western counties here with all of this cloud cover sticking with us throughout the entire day today. And it's all set up because we continue to have a disturbance off of the Atlantic coastline, a low pressure center and a northeasterly wind that's just driving in all of this very damp air across the region. And that is what's locking in the cloud cover and at times that light rain and drizzle we are continuing to see across much of the area. Visibility being affected here folks if we see tens on the map that is a totally clear line of sight across the area but we don't have many tens on the map as that visibility is reduced to just a few miles in and around the district down toward Fredericksburg along the interstate 95 corridor and this is going to be the common theme as we go throughout the rest of the day you're going to continue to see a lot of gray as the cloud cover hangs tough the temperatures my goodness it's going to feel even chilly at times as we don't get out of the lower 60s and yes we will continue to have that very light drizzle and mist falling throughout much of the afternoon so do not put away those umbrellas anytime soon but folks it looks like we could see some slight improvements out there by tomorrow does that mean we get a little bit of sunshine and some warmer temperatures back on wednesday we'll have a full look at your forecast coming up in just a bit all right, Damon, thank you. Well, we've got new video into our newsroom showing the moments leading up to someone throwing a Molotov cocktail into the Cuban embassy. It happened over the weekend. Take a look. And you can see the alleged suspect toss what Cuban officials are saying are two Molotov cocktails in an official release from the embassy. They say the attack happened around 8 p.m. Secret Service arrived and found no significant damage to the building and no injuries. U.S. law enforcement officials are investigating the case. On the social media site X, formerly known as Twitter, Cuban Foreign Minister Bruno Rodriguez called the incident a terrorist attack, though that is still not confirmed. In Maryland, Montgomery County Fire and Rescue responded to a team being struck on East Village Avenue and Heritage Farm Drive around 645 this morning. Details are still limited, but we do know that they were transported with non-life-threatening injuries. The driver of the vehicle remained on scene. Happening today, the Prince George's County Council reconsidering its decision prohibiting council members to vote virtually. Council member Crystal Oriata says that she hopes that she will be able to vote virtually during her maternity leave. She says that she's pushing for change for herself and anyone that comes after her. Either you stand for and with women, you stand for maternal health, or you don't. Council members are set to vote on that resolution later today. Former Loudoun County Superintendent Scott Ziegler is back in court for day two of his trial. Ziegler has pleaded not guilty on two of three charges against him involving conflict of interest and retaliating against an employee in connection to his alleged mishandling sexual assault cases. Well, this comes after his defense tried to get all charges dismissed last week, but that motion was denied. 
Ziegler was originally indicted for false publication, penalizing an employee for a court appearance and conflict of interest. Ziegler will face another trial set for February, and we'll show to bring you the results of today's trial on DC News Now at 4. An Leesburg man accused of injuring another man at the Dulles Town Center is also back in court today. If you recall, Alan Colley was arrested back in April after police say he opened fire at the center, shooting YouTuber Tanner Cook in the stomach while he was filming a prank video. Cook survived after recovering at a local hospital, and we're going to have updates to this trial also at 4, so please stay tuned. And I knew, knew this afternoon that we have learned the name of the teenager shot and killed yesterday in Southeast. His name is Jamal Jones. He was 16 years old. D.C. police responded to the 2300 block of Green Street in the Anacostia neighborhood after 3.30 p.m. Jo J Jones died at the scene. Officials say that they are looking for two suspects in connection to the shooting. Now people living nearby say gun violence is destroying their neighborhood. I'm seeing families hurt. I'm seeing people hurt. That's what I'm seeing. It's a plethora of issues that's um, plaguing our community from uh, poverty to um, g the gun violence, of course. A $25,000 reward is being offered for information, or at least $25,000 is being offered for information that leads to an arrest. D.C. police have identified the victim of another deadly shooting in Southeast. The victim, 22-year-old Vashawn Jones. Police say they found Jones suffering from a gunshot wound around 8.30 Sunday night at the corner of 3rd Street and Livingston Terrace. He later died in a hospital. Police have not made any arrests. And Prince George's County police are in search of a three-year-old giant schnauzer, and they need your help. Police say that the dog was stolen during an attempted carjacking Friday night. Investigators say that two people targeted a woman who was pulled over on Livingston Road in Fort Washington. That's when one of the suspects flashed a gun and stole the dog Duke from the back seat. The woman was not hurt. Well, the deadline for a potential government shutdown looming. Our Liberty Zabala is on the hill with how the shutdown could impact you. Well, Congress only has a few days to reach a budget deal to keep the government open. Now, if the government does shut down, it could affect millions of federal workers. So let's break down for you that potential government shutdown right now. Currently, Congress has not passed any of the 12 appropriation bills needed to set discretionary spending for fiscal year 2024. Congress needs to pass legislation to fund several programs or else the government shuts down. Now, a government shutdown could affect up to more than 2 million civilian federal employees. Federal employees would then be forced into two categories, furloughed or expected. Furloughed employees must stop working. Expected employees must continue to work without a paycheck until the shutdown ends. Essential workers, including those in law enforcement, in hospital medical care, and power grid maintenance would have to keep working. Many small business owners say a government shutdown down would slow the economy, undercut consumer demand, and disrupt access to government resources they depend on. Meanwhile, several nonprofits are offering food assistance, and some lenders are offering financial support to federal workers during the shutdown. It's kind of crazy. I don't know what people are going to do, and um, I think it'll have a pretty big impact on like day-to-day -day life and things like that. So I don't know. I hope that things go well, but you never know. Now, the deadline for Congress to avoid the shutdown is midnight on October 1st. Now, if the government does shut down, this will be the first shutdown since 2019. For now, near Capitol Hill, Liberty Zabala, D.C. News Now. Liberty, thank you. A new survey by Goldman Sachs shows 91% of business owners feel it's important to avoid a shutdown. The report says 70% of those surveyed believe their business would be negatively impacted by a government shutdown. 93% say their revenue would take a hit. 67% of them say their customer demand would go down. And about 24% of concerned businesses rely on the Small Business Administration. And 21% of neg negatively impacted businesses are federal contractors or subcontractors. Meanwhile, President Biden slammed Republicans for backing out of a previous deal to cut spending and fund the government. Well, according to the Secretary of Agriculture, Tom Vilsack, 
Im impact some of the most vulnerable Americans, including those who rely on WIC nutrition services. But Senator Shelley Moore Capito says that only current hope of avoiding a shutdown is the Senate proposal. Nearly 50% of Americans' infants are in engaged and involved in this program. When we have a shutdown, that program ceases. We've passed all 12 bills out of the Appropriations Committee in a bipartisan way. Are there still some odds the House will approve the Senate's legislation?